Welcome back once again, everybody. Boyd here with you. Well, we're here for the grand finale of the MPC 22-inch Eagle build. I had an absolute blast working on this kit and made good progress on it since the last video. We had our little setback there with our decals. I'm going to talk to you guys about what uh, the workaround I came up with on that and uh, some of the stuff that I did on the kit since you last saw it. It's a wonderful kit to work on. I think it's one of Round 2's very best model kits. It's, uh, it's designed very well. It goes together nice. It's super detailed, and it's just an awesome model when it's on display when you're done. I can, words can't even describe how cool it is in person, you guys. If you haven't got one of these kits yet and you're a fan at all of Space 1999, I highly recommend grabbing one of these. Um, they're just really, really cool. I plan on building maybe one or two more in the future. Definitely want to come back and do the rescue version and taking a look at the, um, the lab pod version with the really cool booster pack on top. And then I'm going to... Definitely order the new 148 scale Hawk that's coming out to go along with this. It'll be the same scale as this one, so it'll be really cool. But this is just a really cool model. Uh, we had the issue with our decals. So what I went ahead and did, you guys, is I went ahead and ordered a set of replacement decals from uh, HDA Model Works, my go-to uh, for decals, and uh, never lets me down. These worked out absolutely perfect. You get this really nice set here, which gave me all the markings I needed for finishing up the uh, cockpit, the forward area, and some of the detailing that goes on the landing pods and a little few more odds and ends around the spots on the ship. Now, you really can't go wrong with how you decorate this because, you know, I uh, basically binge-watched binge the entire series of uh, Space 1999 while I was building this. And the thing that I noticed uh, a lot was that there was no continuity, really, unless they used a stock shot that they repeated more than once. And... Um, there was a lot of change-ups in the markings on the ship, especially in Season 2. They were kind of going all over the place. But so, you know, when you're building an Eagle, unless you're doing like the, you know, the Rescue Pod version where it has those definitive red striping on there, all the other markings that you put on here are just kind of, you know, you got certain little ones like these little yellow ones and a few other ones that go in the same spot on every Eagle. But all the little paneling and the aztec and all that, that can be done completely at random, which makes this really fun to work on because you don't have to sit there and meticulously try to copy exact, you know, frame for frame on, on a certain subject. You can just kind of go to town and have a lot of fun. So that's exactly what I did. I just kind of, you know, put stuff on where I felt like it or where I thought it looked good and try to change it up a little bit. And we're going to pick the camera up here in a little bit and we'll float around it and show you more of the detail. But I wanted to lay it out on the bench here and show you what I've all done to modify this thing too. You can see right in front of you, I've got the, uh, the cargo compartment opened up and this is how we mounted our battery in there. I like to make these little simple little battery holders. All I do is take some fairly thick um, styrene stock and I'll heat that up and fold it over and make it a little bit less than a 90 degree bend, kind of like a little spring action, and then glue that down, you know, make it fit the exact shape of the battery so we got like a nice little battery clamp. And then I put a couple of little blocks next to it so the battery can't slide or move and that works out really slick. Doesn't add a lot of weight or anything like that. We had our wire that we ran all the way from the front to get the lighting up on the cockpit. And then we had some lighting here in the in the uh, cargo area. I'll kind of turn it on its side here and show you guys what we've got in there. And um, all it is is a strip of LED tape across the top in warm white. Now what I did to get this really cool look on these windows here is um, I wanted to have lights in this, but I wanted it to be able to, uh, the windows to look completely black when they're turned off, like it does on the TV show. So you can see what I did there is I dusted over about four or five coats of uh to me a smoke that's like a transparent black on the inside of these windows and what that does is it gives a really nice totally blacked out effect uh, you know on the outside when the lights are off so you don't see anything uh, inside and then when you turn the lights on you get a really cool diffused look that gives you an illusion like the you know there's some real real kind of lighting inside the cabin area there and it's really diffused and you can't see anything at all in there as far as the wires or the batteries or anything like that and that worked out really good so the way I mentioned is that you can build this thing you gotta just make sure you keep the paint off of these little uh, lips on the bottom because this is like a kinda like a compression fitting what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna stick this back on here for you I gotta make sure one thing you gotta do with this is you gotta kinda tuck it and make sure the wire doesn't um, get up near the windows so you don't see it up against one of the windows or whatever when you close it up but this just basically fits on here just like this 
and you squeeze it together nice and tight front and back and there we go we got our uh, cargo container put back together so now when we hit our lights here got a little switch on the bottom you can see we're getting a nice little diffused kind of really nice warm white lighting in there but when we turn it off again you can see they're completely black which looks really cool looks just like it did on the show up here we've got the uh, the cockpit all finished off if I can get this in the camera here now I used um, one little three bulb segment of LED tape right up here in this area right here facing down and that's what gives you the little orange lighting in there you guys can see that and I did some weathering on the model. I wanted this eagle to look like um, it did on the show where it's not a pristine eagle. It's, you know, they had this this weathering they always had up, up here in this area here, like little streaks. And then they had these little streaks around the uh, thruster units and all that. And I did a little bit of a wash on this. I wanted to make it look like it was, a, a you know, a, not a beat-up eagle, but one that's being used regularly, like it did on the TV show. We but it did a bunch of striping and everything on the top. We'll show you all that, but... The cockpit here, this is removable, and you can see I've just got a little wire in there for my for my LEDs, and there's a look at the uh, guys. I really like how they did this, too. They give you all the decals for their markings and everything, even the Moonbase Alpha patches that go on their shoulders. Now, something I'll point out that I did here is I took a little bit of my solar res, and I made domes on top of their faces here, and then I uh, painted that with some Tamiya transparent orange to simulate that tinted orange visor that they had on their helmets if you guys can see that the whole entire area right here I just completely painted that by hand with a brush with some craft paint then I did a little bit of wash on it and I used a little decal right there on the door so that turned out really good and our little cockpit fits on here real nice got a little couple little small strips of sandpaper glued on there to kind of help hold it in there and not be uh, fall off so easy now I want to talk about the springs you can see that uh, she sits really nice. You can see when you drop it down, it, it, it settles down like it's supposed to. The kit-supplied springs are um, way too stiff for this thing, even with a little bit of added weight with the battery and everything. Um, and it just basically sat up like, you know, stiff as a board. Where in the TV show, we always saw it come down and, you know, the gear would collapse a little bit. And then it would extend just a tiny little bit when it lifted off. And that's what I wanted to have. And we got a nice little soft springy action. Well, one of the commenters on the channel... By the name of Wraith 2007 he said that um, they had a little uh, selection of these springs at Home Depot uh, this is an 80 piece spring assortment pack that they had there it cost about six bucks so sure enough I went over there and found that and as I opened it up and looked there were four springs that jumped out at me right away that I knew were gonna be perfect because um, they're the exact right diameter to fit around the shaft that goes up in here and uh, they were just a tiny little bit too short so but you could definitely tell they were much softer so what I wound up doing is just stretching them out a little bit, making them the exact same length as the original kit springs, and install them, and it came out absolutely perfect. I wanted to take a picture of the spring before I used it, but I forgot, and I put it in the model, and now I can't get it back out. So, But trust me, when you guys, uh, if you get this little pack, if you want to modify yours, you'll see the four springs I'm talking about right away. They stand out. They're the exact right size and, and all that. There's a couple more springs in here that will probably be useful, you know, too. Um, for other things so you never know when you're gonna need springs so for six bucks you couldn't go wrong there um, I wanted to point out too up on the top here since you guys last saw it this model comes with screws that that hold the cargo container in place and the more I looked at that and the more I didn't like it so I wound up taking the screws out I made little covers for the for the slots that used to be there on a sheet styrene painted over it and uh, glued the uh, cargo container in place I never planned on um, taking the cargo container back off and on or anything like that anyway so no big deal with that that all worked out really good that way it keeps the model really nice and solid too um, there are a couple of little things that I want to talk about on the um, on the instruction sheet now as I mentioned earlier on in this build you want to pay really close attention whenever you're working with any of these these things here these these four uh, landing gear pods uh, make sure you pay attention to the orientation of these panels and that'll save you a lot of trouble. As I mentioned, I glued a couple of these together and realized they were wrong. And luckily, before they were dried, I was able to get them back apart and redo them. But you want to pay attention to that. You want to use a really nice flat surface and tape this down, this, this um, spine area up on top. Once you finish assembling it, let that dry a good 24 hours so you make sure that that's absolutely straight. A couple guys out there have had trouble with the spine coming out crooked on these things. And um, so you can kind of avoid that if you just, you know, 
get it on a really, uh, I used a piece of uh, flat ceramic tile and I laid it down on there once it was glued together and I put some tape over the top of it and um, left it that way and it came out really good. Uh, the, the instructions are really vague on the assembly of the engines here. That's probably the most difficult part of the entire build. This little assembly here with all these different, uh, the orientation that these tanks have to sit, the auxiliary tanks or whatever they are, and all the little fuel line tubing. But um, the way I built mine is I built it off of the ship and then attached it. The instructions have you building it with the um, with this little last bulkhead here kind of attached onto that. What I had I had already glued that onto the model, so I basically stood it upright and and put glue on everything and had everything just sticking straight up. There's a couple little uh, tubes in there that go at little angles, and I had them kind of close. So when I brought it up, I just kind of had to move everything a little bit and then put a drop of glue on it and push it up against there and let it dry. Then I came back and attached the engines. You can see we used our nice um, Rust-Oleum aluminum finish on the on the engine bells. They turned out beautiful. There's a little bit of uh, weathering here that I did on the inside of those that you can see to make those look a little bit used. And just little things like that. Um, I've got a couple things written down here I wanted to remind you guys about. Oh yeah, and then on the instructions here, there's a they mention that these two little thruster things, whatever they are, are supposed to be left off on the um, on the back part here of the model. Well, I'll put up a little screenshot here on the on the uh, video, and you'll see in this shot here that this is from the season one episode when they're crashed on the moon somewhere, and you can see that little part there is clearly there, and on other shots that I found it's not there, so. I wanted to put them on because I wanted to, you know, have them there so the whole thing is sort of symmetrical. And they are supposed to be there on certain versions of the Eagle, whether they, you know, like I said, they were swapping out these models all the time. They blew up dozens of them with firecrackers or whatever. And so they were constantly swapping these things out. They had one Hero 44-inch um, version that pretty much survived through the entire series. And that one still exists. There's some really cool videos out there about that on YouTube, which I used for um, reference. Uh, there's a gentleman over in England that owns it, and it's been completely restored and you can see that there's a lot of really random stuff that was done on that and he talks about how that all uh, changed over time and everything. Uh, the good news about the decals with the round two decal set was I let them know right away on their website that we had the problem. They're going to send me a new set. I'll hang on to those for the next Eagle that I build. Hopefully they'll work better. I'm going to test one of them right away when I get it and I'll let them know and then uh, I'm going to send in a sample. They asked me to send in a sample of my Problem, uh, problem decals and um, hopefully they can check them out and find out what happened but I had no doubt they would take care of their great company and I you know hated hated to even report it but I just want to let everybody know in case you were um, you know having any issues with yours or whatever um, so that's about it you guys we're going to um, I'll pause here for a second I'll take the camera off of the tripod and we'll kind of float around it a little bit and uh, we'll give you a little bit more uh, look at the details, and then we'll call this one a wrap. I've got um, one more video that I'll be coming back doing on this um, at, down the road when I, Jerry and I at HD Model Works are working on a nice little display base for this, and I've got a kind of an, a cool idea for a temporary base that I'll probably use for a different eagle later on. But um, we'll come back and float around the model a little bit and show you more of the detail. I'll be right back. All right, you guys, we'll take a little bit closer look at the model here, you know, just to give you a little bit better look at some of the detail. There's the um, weathering that we did up on the front part there, a little bit of streaking there in those little alcoves by the windows. Saw that almost all the time on the TV show. And down below, here's our detail on our landing struts. We got that nice um, spring action going on there. Try to get you one that's in the light a little bit. They, they work really nice, nice and soft. Here's some uh, a view of the uh, rear engine pod detail. Close up of the spine here. I painted various little shapes on the top of this cabin here, just kind of at random too, that you could see in some of the uh, shots from the show. All these markings that you see here are all from the uh, HDA model work set, and they're great. I was a little, you know, thought they were a little strong looking on the decal sheet, but when you put them on the model, they blend right in. And they definitely match up really nice to how they looked on the uh, filming miniature. We'll kind of turn her around now and show you the other side. Some of our Aztec paneling there on the side of the cargo container.
detail on the back of the engines. It's really hard to get this model on one shot. It's, it's a really big model. And we'll give you a look at the bottom. Got a lot of cool stuff going on there. Just did a little bit of weathering on the bottom as well. Kind of dusted it down with a little bit of gray. That's like the uh, moon dust getting all over it. Like it would. Just like I said, a really, really super fun kit to work on. Can't wait to work on another one. Going to go ahead and order a kit while they're still around. I think I'll do the Rescue Eagle next a little bit down the road, and then we'll look at the Laboratory Eagle. So I hope you guys enjoyed our little video build series here. I couldn't do a really super elaborate long video because I'm, or series on this because I'm uh, working on a special Christmas project for my son, which you guys will see after Christmas. I think I already hinted about what that is, and I'm uh, working hard to get that done on time. It looks like I'll make it, but i got to keep busy. So we'll see you guys probably a little bit after Christmas. I might have a couple little updates here and there about what's going on. And then we're going to talk about what we're going to start building in the new year. we got some exciting new kits to work on. And again, had a blast. I hope you guys will go out and grab one of these kits if you don't have it already and give it, give it a go, especially if you're a Space 1999 fan. You'll be really happy with this when you're done. It's just fantastic. And uh, can't say enough about the, uh, you know, hopefully round two will we'll come out with more kits like this. You know, really nice studio accurate stuff. I think a lot of us modelers don't mind uh, paying a few extra dollars for really, really nice model kits, and this is definitely one of them. It's one of my favorite uh, from them so far, and it's definitely going to be one of my favorites in my co uh, collection for sure. I knew it would be when I started working on it. Okay, you guys, we'll see you for the next video. Until then, take care and happy modeling, everyone.